Hello and welcome to another Space Invaders like arcade game tutorial. I'm Matt with Nightrun Studio and in this episode we're going to look at how to make our game more interesting by giving enemies the ability to shoot back at us. Let's get started. So first off, this projectile is actually going to function much like the projectile that our player shoots, only it's simpler actually. So to get started here, I'm going to head into my scene view and I'm just going to get a projectile sprite and drop that into my hierarchy. All right, so here's my projectile. Now we're going to want to make a prefab out of this and essentially what we want it to do is we want these ships to randomly instantiate this so that it heads downwards and if it hits the player, it destroys them. So let's get started by writing some script. I'm going to head into my scripts folder and we'll create a new C-sharp script. I'll call this one enemy projectile. Now before we get into Visual Studio, I'm just going to add this component onto my projectile. And I'm also just going to rename this as Enemy Projectile so I don't get confused in the future. Alright, so first off we want to make it so that this projectile moves downwards. And so I'm going to create a public float or decimal number called Speed so that we can change the speed within our editor. We're then going to head down to our update function here. Remember update is running constantly every frame. And we simply want to go transform. So it accesses that transform component dot translate, which means it's just going to be moving. And in brackets here, we're going to make this one a vector two dot down. And we're going to multiply it by speed and multiply that by time dot delta time. All right, popping back into Unity now. If I were to assign a speed, let's just keep it slow for now. We'll give it two. And you'll notice that my projectile just heads right off the screen. Now the one other thing that we want to do though is we want to make sure that our projectile doesn't stay alive forever. We want it so that once the projectile gets out of the screen it destroys itself so that we don't have thousands of these projectiles. Now we already did this for our player's projectile by creating a boundary. And you'll notice we have a boundary up here at the top of our screen. I'm just going to click on that in my hierarchy, hit command D to duplicate it, and then move it down the bottom so that we also have a boundary on the bottom. Next I'm just going to click on our projectile for the enemy and we're going to add a collider so that it can detect when it's actually hitting our player or that boundary on the bottom. I'm just going to put a box collider 2D on here. You'll notice that mine did not size correctly and so I'm just going to edit that collider so that it's the size of the projectile itself. And I'm also going to make this one into a trigger so that it's not having any problems where it bounces off of ships or anything like that. It can go right through them but our player will still detect it. Now back in our enemy projectile script I'm just going to create a new function. Because we made it a trigger I'm going to make this an on trigger enter 2d function. So this will be called and will run anytime our projectile hits another collider. And essentially what we want it to do is we want it to check first of all to see if the collision thing that it's hit if its game object is tagged as boundary. Now if it is tagged as boundary, we simply want it to destroy itself. Destroy game object. And in this case, the reference to game object just means it will destroy the game object that this script is on. And since this script is on our projectile, the projectile will destroy itself anytime it hits a boundary. You can see now in my scene view, it's headed downward. I moved it slowed it down a little bit and then when it hits that boundary on the bottom it disappears as it should. Now once our enemy projectile is coded to move downward and destroy itself when it hits the boundary, the only other thing is to make sure that it's actually hurting our player, which is actually remarkably easy to do. If we head into our player live script, you'll notice that at the moment he's already set up to destroy himself whenever an enemy ship collides with him. Now the first thing we're going to want to do here is pretty much use all of this code exactly the way it already is, except there's a problem. In our game, our enemy projectiles need to be set up as triggers. This is because otherwise when our enemy ships spawn them in, they would collide with each other and create problems, whereas if we set it as a trigger, they can drop down without actually pushing each other or running into each other and that sort of thing. So what we're going to need to do in our player live script is create a new function and we're just going to call this one and rather than an on collision since they are triggers we're going to make it an on trigger enter 2d function but it's going to do all of the exact same things that we do when we hit a ship so i'm just going to copy and paste that in here 
We can also delete the collider keyword here because it's not necessary when working with triggers. And very simply, all this is gonna do is that when our player hits a trigger, in this case, the projectile, and we'll make sure that our, we can change the name here from enemy to enemy projectile. So if it hits something tagged as an enemy projectile, it will, first of all, destroy the object we've collided with, the projectile. It will create an explosion and then subtract a life from our player. And if he's out of lives, it will destroy him altogether. So now that we've got our projectile working the way we want it to, I'm gonna click on my prefabs folder, and I'm just gonna drag my enemy projectile down into here and make it into a prefab. At this point, I can remove it from the game itself, and now we're ready to get our enemy ships set up so that they actually spawn these projectiles into the game. To do this, I'm actually just gonna click on one of my ships, open up the prefab. And the reason I've opened up the prefab is because I'll want to apply this change to all copies of the ship. And I'm just gonna add a new component. We'll type in new script here. I'm gonna call this one projectile spawner. All right, now there's a couple of things we want to do inside of here, but the first one is simply to let our enemy know which game object it's gonna be spawning in. So we're gonna do a public game object. I'm gonna call this one enemy projectile. Back in Unity, you'll notice that our projectile spawner script now has a box for the projectile. I'm just gonna go into my prefabs, grab that enemy projectile we created and drag it into there. It now knows what to spawn. Now the next thing that we're going to want to do is actually program our enemy to spawn that. Remember that in Unity we use instantiate in order to bring spawn new items into the game. And this takes in three arguments. The first wants to know what it is instantiating, and in this case it is the enemy projectile. We then do a comma and it wants to know where to spawn it. We're just going to do this at the transform dot position of the enemy themselves. Finally, it wants to know if there's any special rotation, and since there is not, we're just going to do quaternion.identity. Quaternion is just a like a vector 3 for rotations, and identity keeps the rotation the same as it already is. So it just means, it's like saying no special rotation. Now if we ran the game with the code like this, our enemies would constantly instantiate projectiles, which is not what we want. So in order to avoid nuclear holocaust of just pure projectile spawning carnage, Let's add a little bit of variability here. So what we're gonna do is introduce a timer. Let's create a public float. Because we're dealing with time, we'll need decimals here, and we'll call this spawn timer. Now the first thing we could do is we could make it in our update here, introduce an if statement, so that if our spawn timer becomes less than or equal to zero, we will instantiate our projectile. Just copy that, or cut that out, and paste it in there. Now all we need to do is have our spawn timer count down so that when it gets to zero, this happens. So I could add a line here that goes spawn timer minus equals time dot delta time. So at this point, if we wanted to, we could just go up here, make this equal to say 10, and now every 10 seconds they would launch a projectile. Now there would be two problems here. The first one is that every ship would spawn the projectile at exactly the 10 second mark. The second problem is that once it's instantiated that projectile, our timer would now be below zero, which means that this would constantly be called and we'd be right back to nuclear holocaust. Let's fix that problem. First off, let's not hard code this to 10 seconds. I'm just gonna leave it like that. And what we're gonna do instead is create a public float called spawn max. And this is where we'll set the maximum time it could take. For now, let's set that to 10. We'll also create a public float called spawn min. And let's just set that to five seconds for now. We'll then head into our, our start function and make this happen randomly. So we'll go spawn timer is equal to random.range. And all this is going to do is pick a number within a range. So in this case, we're going to pick between our spawn min. Then we do a comma and we type in our spawn max. So we'll get a random number, in this case, between 5 and 10. That number will then count down, and when it gets to 0, we'll spawn something in. So we've now got rid of our having all enemies fire at the same time, as each enemy will randomly select when to fire. Now all we need to do is make sure that after they've fired, they reset their timer. So at this point, we'll go spawn timer is equal to, and we can actually just copy this line right out of our start function, as we just want to keep doing this each time. 
So you'll never know when the enemy is going to fire, just one equal sign. As after each time they drop a projectile, they will select a new random number between the minimum and max. Now at the moment, I've still only applied this projectile spawning to my purple ships, and I'm actually gonna leave it like that for now, as I think that will be plenty of shooting going on. And at the moment, they're all naturally set to have a minimum of five and a max of 10, but if I wanted to, I could go in and make individual ships have slightly different timers if I wanted. So I could set this one to have a six and 11, and another to have seven and 12, or whatever you would like. That said, I think five to 10 is enough variability for now. Now after five seconds, the enemies will begin to fire randomly and the projectiles will in fact deal damage. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this tutorial. If you found it helpful, please be sure to click like or subscribe to the channel. Until next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.